Ladies and gentlemen, I have breaking news. Breaking news in the football world. I've just figured it out. I figured out what is the best thing to happen to football in 2024. Yes, that's right. The greatest thing to happen in football in 2024 has just arrived. And hopefully it's here to stay for good. And no, I don't think it's the Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift coverage from all the media outlets, ESPN and NFL Network. And by the way, who got the over under right on the number of times the camera would show Taylor Swift during the Super Bowl? Trust me, I'm not hating on them. Much love to them, but I'm not touching that relationship with a 10-foot pole. That Swifty nation is strong, and I don't want to be canceled. No, no, no. Anyways, I figured out the best thing to happen in football in 2024, and it is quickly approaching, only weeks away. If you're an avid fan of the NFL, that first Monday after the Super Bowl is one of the lowest days of the year, knowing you need to wait five long months for some good old football to come back. The NFL does help our football separation anxiety with the NFL Combine and some free agency news in the draft, which definitely helps. But in 2024, you're going to have a pretty good reason to fire up those sports betting apps in the spring as the newest and freshest football spring league is coming. The United Football League. That's right. The breaking news is that the United Football League is finally here. And I cannot wait to see these new matchups of XFL and United States Football League teams. For all of you who can remember that low budget production of the UFL that came out over a decade ago, take that completely out of your memory. This version of the UFL is a whole lot better, featuring eight teams from the merger of the XFL and the USFL. In today's video, we're going to dig deep into this latest development of the NFL's unofficial minor league of football and how it's going to become one of the greatest things that's going to happen to the sport this year. And spoilers, it's going to be a massive boost to the NFL as well. You won't believe who I think should be the UFL brand ambassador or brand ambassadors. Stick around to the end as we see who should be the face of the UFL. Trust me. You're going to want to see who it is. All right, let's get started. So on December 31st, 2023, the USFL and the XFL announced that the two largest professional sporting spring leagues in North America would join forces and showcase eight football teams separated by two conferences. First, the USFL Conference, consisting of the Birmingham Stallions, the Houston Roughnecks, the Memphis Snowbirds, and the Michigan Panthers. And second, the XFL Conference, which is headlined by the Arlington Renegades, DC Defenders, San Antonio Brahmas, and St. Louis Battlehawks. These eight teams will start to battle it out in March of 2024, just before the new NFL season begins. And I gotta be honest with you, I really can't wait to see if those DC Defenders fans can bring out their beer snake skills again. People have spoken and the XFL has delivered. Off. The I did beer that. snake is back in... Definitely one of the best highlights from last year's XFL games. With these two former football leagues carrying their television rights to the UFL, the league will be broadcasted by Fox Sports and ESPN, two of the largest broadcasting companies, which is perfect for the UFL's inaugural season. With this brand new league certainly heading in the right direction, why do some fans seem to not care about this spring league? Why don't they feel like it's going to last? Well, it's important to consider the history of the spring leagues, especially these two companies, the XFL and the USFL. And let us not forget the NFL Europe concept from the 90s. I mean, it was nice to have football in the springtime and see them in Barcelona in the UK and Germany, but the quality of the football that was being made was barely watchable. Since the existence of the NFL came about, various leagues have tried to replicate the most profitable sports brand in the world in the hopes of generating even just a portion of the NFL's profits. But as many professional sports commentators always say, spring football is always doomed for failure. But why? In 1983, the USFL entered the football scene for the very first time, and it was smart enough not to directly compete with the NFL. The thought of having a football league in the spring excited the fans back then. I mean, who wouldn't be excited, right? Another reason to hop on the couch every night and watch some more football. Well, the first few seasons actually garnered some attention from football fans, filling up the stadium seats and even producing some quality games. But the framework on which it was built accelerated the league's demise. With the league having no salary caps, the teams just jumped right in, spending cash left and right, trying to catch some big fish in the market. And do you know what man was not afraid of emptying his pockets? Donald Trump. In 1984, Trump purchased a team in the USFL, the New Jersey Generals, and he spearheaded the league's case to challenge the NFL and proposed to move the league's schedule to the fall in the 1986 season. The USFL then filed an antitrust lawsuit against the NFL for allegations of monopoly. If you are a startup company, it surely does not help to battle a Goliath when it comes to legal issues. 
But hey, the USFL won the lawsuit and they were granted $1 for their efforts. Yeah, you heard that right, $1. But the lawsuit wasn't about the money. It was about the USFL standing up to the NFL to show them that they mean business and they want that challenge of being their main competitor for player talent, coaches, and of course, fans and viewership. But unfortunately, in 1986, the USFL had literally zero money left and the war between the NFL and the USFL ended right before it began. And there it is, a short stint of spring football who flew too close to the sun. Right after that, no one even dared to create their own spring league. It was just a waste of money. I mean, who is crazy enough to create his own league from his own money? Oh yeah, right, there is one. Then WWF owner Vince McMahon introduced the XFL. Where's my smash mouth wide open football? It's gone. The XFL is gonna be the extra fun. And well, this one was, how can I put it? Unique, unconventional, and a complete 180 from the NFL. And it was really more of a publicity stunt than a football league. The XFL highlighted its rough style of football, not to mention those pretty cool nicknames on the back of players' jerseys. Who could ever forget He Hate Me, or Death Blow, or Primetime Pump? I'm not gonna lie, those types of things about the XFL were pretty damn cool and innovative. And it looked like wrestling out there, just on a football field. It was fun to watch every week, but unfortunately the 18 league just lasted for one season after all of that, with NBC and WWF losing $35 million each before completely shutting down the league. Well, at least they gave us the sky cam. 20 years later though, the XFL and even the USFL rose from their graves and decided that it was time to try again and give it one more shot. The two leagues came back separately, with the XFL having its first hit in 2020. But yeah, we all know what happened in 2020, COVID. So the league shut down mid-season and even once again filed for bankruptcy. In August of 2020, however, the XFL was revived when a consortium led by Dwayne The Rock Johnson and his ex-wife Danny Garcia bought the company for $15 million. And you're gonna line up and you're gonna show the world what it's like to be truly hungry. With that it was revamped in 2023 with eight teams battling it out for the championship. The USFL had a more successful two seasons and had a significant edge in the ratings over the XFL. And then an idea emerged. What if instead of battling it out for the ratings, you battled it out on the football field, merging both leagues while having separate conferences? Thus, the United Football League was born, or should I say, reborn. So here we are today with a brand new NFL minor league again, but with unique ownership and Russ Brandon leading the way as the United Football League CEO. You have a very reputable VP of officiating and player rules innovation in Dean Blandino. Dean made coaches challenges and reviewable plays actually entertaining to watch last year in the XFL. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely take a look this season on Dean Blandino's approach to reviewing plays. They take you into the booth for referee deliberation and ultimately make their decision way faster than it takes NFL refs to figure it out. Nerve center of the XFL on game day. And the technology state of the art. They even made the opening night extra special with the 2023 XFL champion Arlington Renegades facing the 2023 USFL champion Birmingham Stallions on March 30th, 2024. So what can us football fans expect from this huge merger? Well, expect some football with a lot of twists. You know the first reason why the NFL can benefit from the UFL? Because it can be their experimental grounds for rules, officiating, player development, coaches currently out of the NFL looking to get more reps so they can get back into the league, and every Everything. Speaking of NFL coaches out of the league, do you know what would be perfect for the UFL? Okay, this is gonna sound wild, but hear me out. What if the UFL made Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel their brand ambassadors for the 2024 spring season? Bill Belichick takes the XFL conference and Mike Vrabel takes the USFL conference and they peddle the UFL brand all over the place and mentor these UFL coaches and players. Maybe even do commentating, who knows? But putting Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel as the face of the UFL just makes a lot of sense. In fact, I made a whole other video of why I think they should be the UFL ambassadors. Just click the link in the top right corner to watch that video. You know what else would be fun to watch? How the UFL will incorporate social media into their league. Just look at the San Antonio Brahmas. They just signed YouTube star destroying Donald Delahaye Jr. to be their kicker for the season. Oh my God. Donald, aside from your social media success, would you be interested in kicking? The UFL just brought in almost 6 million viewers with one signing. There is no doubt Destroying will bring in new fans to the UFL. And if you don't know who Destroying is or haven't seen some of his YouTube videos, take a look at some of those. 
Oh yeah, and he's a pretty good kicker too. I mean, if you have Luis Zendejas as your kicking coach, you really can't go wrong. Luis Zendejas, a good friend of mine, kicked in the NFL, played for the Cowboys. Luis Zendejas and the entire Zendejas family are kicking legends. With the current XFL-NFL agreement, the NFL can use the UFL as an avenue to test and develop new rules and innovations. And I mean, that's just a dub for everyone. Without the NFL taking the risk of making new rules and technology on game day, we have the privilege to watch it first in the UFL. And if it doesn't work, scrap it and move on to the next one, just like that. Who knows, maybe we can even see some of those three-point tries and that double forward pass rule in the NFL in the future. I know the NFL purists will say, hell no, don't change anything, but let us know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think? Do you want to see in the NFL with that new overtime shootout format in the future? Well, that was for the league to decide, now that they have the luxury to watch it over the spring. It's not just for the league though, but for the players as well. With thousands of football players, both college and free agents, just wanting to be a part of the NFL, only 224 of them or so are going to get drafted, leaving thousands, even without the chance to prove themselves. In the U UFL, though, they will have their shot to get more tape on them, more reps post-college, and it gives the scouts some additional info as well. The UFL will become a one-stop destination for players who feel they have what it takes but didn't make the cut. Again, everyone wins with the UFL. In 2023, nearly 120 players from the XFL and the USFL signed NFL contracts after their seasons ended, with 40 players still on rosters by the final week and still getting their paychecks. It was indeed one of the visions of the United Football League. While they don't want to be tagged as a developmental league for the NFL, they want their players to show off their skills in the spring while all eyes are on the league in front of the scouts and coaches. It'll give these players a platform to play and show what they've got. They are getting these players their bags. And the real winners? Us, the fans, because now we can have football any time of the year. There is no off season. There's no break. And for all of you sports bettors out there, this is just another opportunity to fatten up your DraftKings or FanDuel accounts. But the UFL this time needs to get everything right. No spring league in the history of professional football ever lasted for a long time in this business. This is their best shot to make this work. You are getting backed by the NFL and actually have the money and media support to pull it off. You just have one thing to do. Attempt to lure NFL and college football fans. And then you're all set. Be the reason why people want to watch spring football once and for all. Imagine the future for football. A future where we can watch quality and entertaining football even in the spring. On March 30th, 2024, a new era in football will be born. Thanks for watching and leave us your comments below and like and subscribe for more of our football content. See you soon.